When your nation's capital is under attack in a violent insurrection, there's very little to cheer about. Well, except when one goes down and you jump up off the couch like your team just scored the winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. <clears throat> well, this absolutely will make you laugh. I mean, you know, bring you some joy at least. Here it is, the judge. Mr. Barnett, are you with us? Uh, you may be muted, Mr. Barnett. We may have lost Mr. Barnett, who is obviously the reason we're all here this morning. Pause. The courtroom deputy, Mr. Barnett. The defendant, Mr. Barnett. Yes, the judge. Ah, thank you for joining us again. Good morning, Mr. Barnett. This is Judge Cooper. Can you hear me? The defendant. Good morning. Yes, I can hear you. The judge. Okay, just like last time, we would obviously usually do this in person, but due to the pandemic, we are proceeding remotely. Are you okay with proceeding via telephone this morning? The defendant. Yes, that's fine. The judge. Okay, very well. If you could mute your phone now, unless we need to hear from you, that would be very helpful. The defendant. Okay, I'll mute now. The judge. Thank you, sir. Then the judge turns to the prosecutors. He says, all right, Ms. Dorman or Ms. McLean, where are we? One of the prosecutors, Nicole McLean, says, yes, Your Honor. Uh, and so at this time, I believe there's going to be a change in counsel in this case, which means the defendant is actually changing his defense lawyers, and they're in the middle of that process happening. Prosecutor says, I had sent over to the defense lawyer a proposed protective order in this case for discovery that he was going to share with his client and speak to his client about. We've provided some discovery informally in this case, specifically through the U.S. Attorney's Office in Arkansas. The government is still undertaking this massive effort to gather discovery in this and all of the Capitol riot cases. What the government is going to ask for today is for a continuance of 60 days to gather discovery, to discuss the protective order, and for the new attorneys in the case to get up to speed on what has been done. The judge. And the last time we were here, no plea offer had been extended. Is that still the case? Prosecutor. That is still the case, Your Honor, and that is still the case in all January 6th cases, meaning no January 6th arrestees have been offered a plea deal by the government. The judge says, okay, just out of curiosity, what is the government's estimate of the guidelines range for the dangerous weapons charge here? Have you done that cal calculation? There's then some discussion between the judge and the prosecutors on how much time in prison the defendant might ultimately be looking at if he's convicted on the dangerous weapons charge he is facing. That resolves like this. The prosecutor. For the 1512, it's going to be the highest offense level here. I believe it's going to be a base offense level of 14. The maximum sentence on the 1512 is a 20-year term of imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. The judge. Okay. All right. Just trying to figure out what we've got. And he turns to defense counsel. Counsel, May 4th at 11 a.m. Does that work for you? Defense lawyer. One moment, Your Honor. Uh, yes, that works for me. Yes. And then up pops the defendant. He unmutes himself. Defendant, I'm sorry. I need a sidebar with my counsel. That doesn't work for me. I need a sidebar. A different defense lawyer stands up. Richard, this is Stephen Metcalf. The defendant, I need a sidebar. I need a sidebar. Defense lawyer Stephen Metcalf, listen, Richard, this that we're talking about now, this is a date wholly separate from any application for bail for you. So just hang tight. We're going to hash out everything we need to with the court right now. There are a couple of other issues that we need to address, and we will speak to you as soon as you give us a call back today. Did you hear me? The defendant. Yes, I understand, but I've been here a long time. I've been here a month, and they're going to set it for another month, and everybody else is getting out. Defense lawyer, Richard. The judge, okay. Defense lawyer, I'm asking you to just hang tight. We're going to address a couple of other matters. The defendant, I don't agree with this date. It's not fair. First defense lawyer, so uh, Mr. Barnett, the judge, all right. Counsel, let me cut this short, okay? The defendant, I'm on the phone. I can't have a sidebar with my attorney. It's not fair. The judge, counsel, why don't we take five? The defendant, we need to start doing this in person. Remember, the defendant just consented to doing this not in person when the judge asked him directly at the start of the hearing, but now he says, we need to start doing this in person. The judge, Mr. Barnett, hold on, sir. We're going to take five. And one of you, meaning one of the defense lawyers, you can step into another room and contact Mr. Barnett. Is that possible? The defendant, it is possible. We've done it before. The judge, hold on, sir. Hold on, hold on. Here's what we're going to do. 
The court will set a date for a further status hearing on May 4th at 11 a.m. The defendant, oh no, sir. The judge, in the meantime, sir, if you're counsel, the defendant, I have a phone number right here. He can call me. He's done this before. I've got a phone number right here. He can call me on. The defense lawyer, judge, I'll take the number. The judge, all right, take the number, speak to your client, and then we'll reconvene in five minutes. The defendant, the government keeps dragging this out and living, letting everybody else out. Defense lawyer, Richard, Richard, meaning the defendant, Richard, I'm advising you to just stop. The judge, counsel, step out and call your client. The court goes into recess. Now, it is not reflected in the official transcript that we have obtained, but one reporter who was monitoring the hearing today for the Daily Beast swears that at that point in the proceeding, as they were going to recess, the defendant also screamed, forgive me, um, quote, this has been a bunch of crap. The defendant in question here um, is this fellow, who you will recognize from the immediate aftermath of the January 6th attack. This is the guy who mugged for the camera with his feet up on the desk in Nancy Pelosi's office.